Hello, my name is Sarah Hayden, and today we are in the studio with Greater Newburyport Village, a, a fantastic organization that's going to help keep older people uh, aging in their homes, which I think is a fantastic idea. So I'm here today with the founder and membership, and just pe and what's your role? I didn't get. I do I do uh, publicity and marketing and an amazing group of people, outreach. and we're going to get some explanation as to what this organization is. So this is. Don't tell me anything. Paul Harrington is a co-founder. Bill yep. Franz, That's membership. Right. And Kate Derrick is everything else. <laughs> so for today. For today, <laughs> yes. So I think we'll start with Paul. Yeah. And you can maybe tell us about how this all got started. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having us here Oh, it's today. wonderful. It's, it's great to uh, be here. Uh, well, the concept of the village really started in probably the middle of 2012. And there were a couple of fellows in town who were uh, in a situation where they had friends and family who were dealing with elderly parents who were in need of a great deal of support. And they thought, gee, there must be a way to create a, a process in town where, you know, folks can get support who are in those situations. So they had talked to uh, uh, a person over at the Home Health Services which is in Lawrence, and uh, this uh, Meg Hogan had been involved in uh, trying to create uh, villages, and villages are based on uh, a village that was formed in Beacon Hill back 15 years ago. And what it is is that uh, as people age in the community, uh, they kind of and they've retired, they kind of lose contact with the folks they had worked with throughout mm -hmm. their lives and things kind of change so you need to kind of recreate yourself a bit. So the idea of the village is that we can do this by uh, having events and social events and so forth where they can kind of come together and learn who folks are. But in any event, in 2012 the idea came into place. and. Um, over the course of uh, maybe a year and a half, these things do not go together very easily. There's a lot to do. Uh, we, about uh, mid-2013, we were able to go ahead and get incorporated, and it took us almost nine more months before we got our 501c3 It is place. a process. It's a process, and uh, the board that we had formed then were people that were interested in the possibility of creating this village and um, you know we had a couple of lawyers on the board and we had some folks who were good at fundraising and so forth uh, and uh, so we basically were able to get the thing operational in terms of uh, business. Mm -hmm. uh, now we had to kind of figure out well so what kind of business are we in? So. Mm -hmm. uh, what we had done is we had sent out a, a survey to probably a thousand people in the greater Newburyport area. We got back about 250 responses and That's good. Uh, we had asked them to kind of check off different items that they might like to see in this village. Uh, we then followed up by contacting those folks and having an open house meeting at the library in Newburyport and folks came and and we gave them the pitch, and at the same time we asked if anybody was interested in participating to help to build the village. And we were able to withdraw out of that group probably eight or ten people mm -hmm. who over the next year did the research of the 140 villages in the country that existed at that time to see what they looked like and to uh, see what, how that would fit into Newburyport because mm -hmm. all of these communities are different. Yep. And you had to look at the, uh, what, what was going on in the different areas. Uh, at the time we thought, well, we're going to have a village with an executive director and we're gonna, we had some pretty grand ideas. <laughs> well, it turned out uh, that as we continued to develop the plans, which took another year, uh, I understand all it, this. It became <laughs> pretty evident to us that what we were really have going to be able to look at in Newburyport, because we were coming up with a good number of very interested volunteers, that we thought that we were going to proceed in an all-volunteer 
organization, which is pretty unusual for the village movement. So this is what we've done. So, you know, there are two big resources that any business has, and it's your, you know, your finances and your people. So for us now, it's people and volunteers, and we have uh, about, I don't know, 70 volunteers going on now wow. in the village. All of them do different, some of uh, do chores around the house, and others help us to manage the website, or we have nine people who are on the uh, uh, board of directors, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of time and effort that goes in to uh, keep the organization going, but uh, it's been a long road, but we are on the road to success. We really feel very good about what's going on, and we think our membership is pretty happy. So, so this is a, a national movement? Well, there is a village, there are village movements around the country. There's, mm -hmm. I think right now there's 240 villages that are actually operational in the village. And uh, I see. about 75% of them are freestanding villages. In other words, we are a freestanding village. Others uh, villages are probably sponsored sometimes by continuing uh, 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 care facility may sponsor a oh, village. Oh, I see. Uh, so council on Aging might sponsor Our Council on Aging or the city may be involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, and probably 90% of the villages do have uh, professional staff. We're among the minority by being fully volunteer. Wow. In Massachusetts, there are only two, two volunteer uh, villages, one on the Cape and, of course, ourselves. And I think there's probably eight villages in this, in this state. Interesting. Yeah. So, so I think this sounds just great and very interesting. And I, I was trying to see how it would be integrated with like your, maybe your council on aging or your senior center. Um, but I know there's membership involved, so. There is, yeah. Would you like me to speak to sure. the membership issue? Sure. So I, I head up the membership portion of the village and that has two components. One of which is recruiting new members. So I work closely with Kate in the marketing and publicity trying to get the word out as to who we are. And the other part is membership care. Uh, so we want to recruit new members and we want to make sure that we're always making ourselves relevant to those people who belong to the organization. So uh, it's a membership organization. So kind of like the why, you join it and you pay some dues. Our dues are $25 a month. Um, is that per person or per family? Uh, so it's $25 a month, so 300 a year, and that's for an individual. Now, for a family, it would be $450. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we know that some people in, in the community can't afford that. So we've been very fortunate in some donations, and we have something called the Membership Assistance Fund. So if someone says, well, I'd really like to be part of the village, I'd like to become a member, uh, we can subsidize their membership, mm -hmm. uh, either, either in whole or in part. And so we're very flexible in that regard. So you join the organization and then you're able to receive the services. And um, you might want to know, well, what are the right. services? What, what do I get? I paid $25, <laughs> what do I get? And the question uh, is, is a terrific one, and the answer is always a unique response, which is, well, what do you need? So every person who joins the village, uh, one of the membership team members will sit down with them and do an hour-long interview. What are your interests? What have you done? What's your career been like? What are your hobbies? Uh, and what are your needs? And uh, so that we can, we can have a unique response to whatever it is that folks ask for. So the types of things uh, actually fall into various categories. Maybe there are some unique needs right out there, but general household help is mm -hmm. one. Um, uh, transportation is one. Uh, we have many people who um, go away for a portion of the winter, and they'd like somebody to maybe take, you know, check in at their house and see how the house is going. We have people who do pet care. Mm -hmm. um, we walk Paul's dog when Paul had his <laughs> accident. And uh, we've, we've gone into homes and fed cats, and we even took care of a parakeet. So, however, mostly uh, transportation is the large uh, uh, need. So someone 
um, just lives around the corner from me. She can get herself out to Market Basket, for instance, and do her own shopping, but she lives on the second floor and she can't carry her bags up to the second floor. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a volunteer come and help her in that regards. We've had people who've had um, day surgery where they've been anesthetized and they need a driver to drive them back. Yeah. So we'll be happy to come and drive them back. Uh, we have uh, a woman who uh, lives in Amesbury, which is one of the communities that we serve. And she has therapy on her back up in Rye, New Hampshire. Uh, and she can't drive after the therapy, so we'll have someone drive her up. If, if uh, the drive is too long, we'll have someone drive her up, drop her off at the doctor's office, go home and go about their business, and then a second person come and pick her up. So that's done by a volunteer? That is done by a volunteer. And they, they pay for their gas that's involved and all of that business. They're volunteering They're their volunteering time They're volunteering their time. Resources. The only thing, if um, there are tolls involved, well, then the member would pay the tolls. Or if there's a parking fee, they'd pay the parking mm -hmm. fee. So we have, as Paul said, about 70, close to 75 members. And we have, um, and many of those, half of them are volunteers also. So I'm a yep. member, I'm also a volunteer. Uh, but we have people in the community who just want to volunteer, and we have 30 of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and at this point in time, they're not members, but they're very interested in the village and how the village operates. Many of them are drivers. Uh, we have one woman who uh, is a member. She's had a stroke, and um, uh, she doesn't have use of her left arm, one, just one arm only. And she has a mass of medical paperwork that yeah. she needs to have filed. So we have a, a non-member volunteer in this case who's happy to go to her home and help her file her paperwork and do a few other things. Although this lady does have the access to many of the state services that help her with bathing yeah, and washing. These are things we don't do. Right, We're not say, a healthcare you, organization. So what don't you do? Some specific things. Specifically, we don't transfer people in and out of wheelchairs or in and out of beds. We don't help people with what are called activities of daily living, like taking showers or getting dressed. Uh, we don't do anything associated with legal paperwork. Uh, we can't witness any documents. Um, so those, we have about a dozen prohibitions, and those are the, mm -hmm. the major ones. We don't handle any medications. We have some people who have just come back from uh, a doctor's visit, and they need someone to go and pick up their pharmacy prescription. We'll be happy to go pick up the pharmacy prescription and deliver the bottle, mm -hmm. but we can't deliver a pill. So those are right. some of the prohibitions. We train all our volunteers very carefully upon this, and they sign documentation as to understanding what they can't do. All our volunteers are Corey checked mm -hmm. so that they're able you know, to go into someone's home, uh, that the state has said, yes, we're okay with this record. All our drivers, in addition to Corey checks, we do de Department of Motor Vehicle checks on our drivers, mm -hmm. and uh, we walk through our procedures as to how they handle things. How about IT? Do you do any of that stuff for people? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Because I, I can just envision my, mm -hmm. my husband, uh, you know, he, he gets stuck on some things. And, right. You know. Uh, actually, we do. We've had, um, and actually Kate's husband is very, very helpful in this, and uh, <laughs> we've had a, a few people who have purchased new smart TV sets, they've upgraded, and they haven't the nightmare. faintest idea yeah. how to connect it to the web or what that means, and we have people who can do that. Right now, we're offering iPad classes over here at the Senior Center. I saw that. Uh, and uh, which has been a terrific partner for us. We, we see ourselves as a, a service organization, but we see ourselves as a, as a social organization as well, because even in a community as wonderful as Newburyport, where there are churches who sponsor meals almost every night of the week, and there are book clubs almost every place that you can, you can turn around and see book clubs happening at the library and other places, um, uh, people can still live in isolation. They sure and can. we don't want that to be the case. So we partner with the Senior Center. We offer a monthly lecture on the third Wednesday of every month. Um, we'll give people rides to the lectures if they need it. We have a monthly dinner at some local restaurant in, in the community um, where people pay their own way, but we right. get together. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, uh, we've had some potluck dinners that have been very successful. People just come, bring what they want, and, and share an opportunity to get together. So we're continually trying to reach out to the membership to make sure that 
we're relevant in their That's lives great. and we understand what it is that they need. That sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you have young people that can volunteer. We do, actually. Mm -hmm. the, the volunteer who is working with this member who uh, had all the medical bills stacked up and needed to have them straightened out is, is really too young to join the village. Mm -hmm. And we, we have a number of volunteers who, who are just giving of their time. And I think that's part of the reason why we have been successful because there are so many people in this area who do volunteer, who mm -hmm. are willing to, uh, to become involved in their community and, and um, seek us out to help. Mm -hmm. So can you, if, if a high school student wanted to um, do their community service hours with the village, can they do that? We are, uh, one of our volunteers is speaking with the, the high school and um, the folks there who run that program now, and we hope to be able to include them as well in some of our volunteer activities. Yeah, no, that sounds wonderful, because we, yeah. here we have some students that come, there's, a, it's, it's a very similar, mm -hmm. run yep. as a nonprofit. There's a lot of volunteers, but we do have, um, I mean, there's a lot of me members, but we do have some volunteers, mm -hmm. we do have some student interns, and we have students that come and do just their community service hours, so there's, there is an overlap for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe, um, maybe we can talk a little bit about where they would, what kinds of um, things you offer, you mm -hmm. know, as far as some, some of the social activities maybe a little bit mm -hmm. more specific, and where people can find out about these types of things. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we, we do have uh, a standing monthly lecture at the Senior Community Center every, every month on the, th the third the third, third Wednesday, Wednesday, which Wednesday. we will be filming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, With permission, uh, of course. <laughs> yes. In, in addition to that, I mean, we have a lot of member, uh, member activities in addition to just local things. We've, we've taken people to, uh, to Boston uh, for tours, to up to a gun quit for a tour. We've done a lot of birding. We've, we've uh, Gosh, done we some are, of that. Gosh, we have a great community, we don't do. we? do. There are oh, yeah. many because things to do here. Because there's so many here. things I know that this, mm -hmm. the Council on Aging also offers, mm -hmm. and just all around, it it's, it's, yeah. it's just sounds great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have an active group of members who, who love all of these things, and, yep. and we always have a good group of people who want to, want to enjoy that, enjoy each other's company. So, so do you have that way. rules for members? Are there rules? <laughs> you know. Like, uh, uh, I don't think we've had to cross that bridge yet. We oh, might at some point. It's but probably a good <laughs> idea to get the bridge established before you have to cross it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, aside from, you know, the just everyday etiquette, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had... No, we haven't, we haven't had... We, no, well, we, haven't. we do have a member's handbook and so we forth, can. and basically it... It kind of just outlines more or less what the relationship yeah. would yeah. be between the member and the volunteer, right? So That's that the, so yes. that the member understands what what services they should expect. Yeah. And in uh, those services, generally, if we make it real simple, we say it's it's something you might ask your next door neighbor to do for you. Mm -hmm. You know, that basically mm -hmm. that's... Mm -hmm. So is there like a time, like if I was volunteering, mm -hmm. uh, would I be able to say, um, you know, I have a couple of hours every whatever, Saturday right. night or something, exactly. so mm -hmm. you can place me in, but it, you know, you can tell the, the member will, if they, what they request, the volunteer will know there's a time. You Surely, know, yeah. I, I was uh, thinking hard as to your question of what type of rules might <laughs> we have, and, and not uh, that I have any reason. <laughs> no, no, no. But that, that's a good question, and we we ask that if if a, if a member needs a service, that they give us 48 hours to find a volunteer, because everything we're just powered by our volunteers, mm -hmm. and if we are unable to find the volunteer to do it, then we're unable to provide the service and we hope that the member understands that. Although we are looking at some possibilities now in the upcoming budget year that if on a, uh, on a, on a local basis, if we can't find a ride for somebody, then we could get them an Uber driver, mm -hmm. yeah. but not an Uber driver back to forth to Boston, <laughs> you know. Yep. But locally, yeah. we could we could do that. So this so we're evolving. We're coming up yep. on our second year anniversary, and we're still figuring things out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think 
and we also go over the prohibitions, what they cannot ask a, a, a volunteer to do. Um, and uh, we have what's, the way we deliver the service is through our concierge, which is someone who answers the phone. So uh, a volunteer will, will desire a service. They'll call a specific phone number, uh, which, is, um, uh, take, which is answered 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. On the weekends, it goes into voicemail. And the concierge takes the, takes the service request uh, and then goes into our database of volunteers. And as you had said, if you were interested in volunteering and you had three hours on a Tuesday, well, that would be Sarah can do three hours on Tuesday afternoon. So if the service request for the, was for that time period and it was the type of thing you were interested in doing, then, um, then you'd get an email. Mm -hmm. You know, from our concierge saying, "Gee, are, are you interested in doing this?" That's a lot of work. It's it. For one uh, well, person. you know, this is as Paula said. This is neighbors helping neighbors, which mm -hmm. sounds very easy, but when you take that through Newburyport, West Newbury, Newbury, Ainsbury, oh, yes. Salisbury, <laughs> Raleigh, yeah. okay, you need an organization <laughs> and you need operational <laughs> practices yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's how we we determine it. I mean, we need more volunteers or someone's listening today and they would really like to volunteer then go to greater newburyport village dot org on the web and you can pull up our website and you'll find out how to how to proceed um, so uh, those are some of our rules and that's how the the process works i think it sounds mm. really very helpful i mean mm -hmm. it does there are a lot of places that overlap with other things that are offered. Mm -hmm. But I think that's important too because sometimes people don't gel with some organizations mm -hmm. and they really, yeah. mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I don't know. Yeah. But we Kate, you might want to speak to our unique value proposition because we did quite a bit of work on oh, this last we, year. We sure did. And uh, I mean, what we offer, again, the, the key word is neighborly support. We offer a network of neighborly support. And so what that means really is we will try to, to do for our members what they would ask a neighbor to do for them. So um, if, if that involves changing light bulbs or, or taking the trash out to the curb because you've, you've just had an operation or some medical event and you can't do that yourself, walking your dog, cleaning up the yard a little bit. We're not landscapers yep. and mm -hmm. we, we can't do a whole landscape kind of kind of job, but we can help much mm -hmm. as the neighborhood help. We we also are not professional shovelers, and we'll yeah. you know we can help in yeah. a pinch, but but that's not mm -hmm. uh, what we can we can do either. So so really that's 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 what we offer. We're we're trying to recreate uh, what Newburyport in many of these villages y used to be like mm -hmm. uh, long before there were vehicles, when neighbors depended on neighbors, when most of the men in the village were at sea. Yep. And, and the women who were left here helped each other to, to get things done. So, so people's children, too, young, well, mm -hmm. older children, right. whatever, you know, um, can sponsor their parent, too, or That's their right. parents. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a nice, yeah. right. it's a nice gift or a nice yeah. thing to do. Yeah. And what we're also trying to do in having both a service and a social organization is that when you have a volunteer show up at your home, you know who that volunteer right. is. Right. Because you've been to dinner with that person, or you've been to a lecture with that person, mm -hmm. or you've been to a potluck dinner. So, you know, asking for help is not something that people feel really comfortable in doing. In Especially fact, New Englanders. Perhaps that's <laughs> so. But and certainly our first no, several months in true. operation, uh, we didn't have people asking for service, and that was a bit of a problem <laughs> for us. You know, so we had to keep reminding people, please ask for some help. Yeah. Yeah. It, that uh, is, that's an issue that people are apprehensive to pick the phone call up and ask you to come mm -hmm. in and change a bulb mm -hmm. because their grandson is going to be here yeah, yeah. And, and he's going <laughs> to show up in about four months. So, yeah. <laughs> so why wait? No, I totally, I totally mm -hmm. understand that. Yeah. One of the things that we would, might get a call for occasionally is, uh, you know, somebody's looking for a plumber. So we actually have a list of about 120 different vendors, plumbers, electricians, uh, uh, auto mechanics and uh, any professional type of thing mm -hmm. you may need around the house. And these are uh, uh, contractors and vendors 
who have been recommended to us by some of the village members who have used them and who has found them to be reliable and mm -hmm. cost effective mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, so uh, folks so it's can just a call. recommendation. Right. People mm -hmm. can call and we'll generally give them three names and then it's up to them to just call and make their own deal. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we have that resource as well for folks. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds fabulous. Is there anything else you'd want to um, share? Well, I think that uh, the last thing really is that we are still very interested in, in finding new members and in finding new volunteers. We, we, we want our village to grow and we want to become a bigger part of people's lives here in the villages, the towns mm -hmm. we serve, which is Newburyport, West Newbury, Newbury, uh, Byfield, Amesbury. Mm -hmm. So um, it, I think that that's, that's something. The one thing to take away is that we would love to hear from anyone who might want to get out more maybe doesn't need a lot of help or those who do need some help at home because we're we're now structured uh, and and up and running and able to answer those kinds of needs. Well, I think that it sounds so good and so helpful. I, I of course I'm thinking about myself not that I'm well I've past the 55 mark of your <laughs> membership. So <laughs> and you kind of forget sometimes how mm -hmm. yeah. where you are. I right. think, oh, I'm not there yet. Oh, yes, I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, but just in my recent, you know, my own personal need, thinking, oh, gosh, it would be nice to have someone just maybe stopping by mm -hmm. at, you know, my home when I wasn't there right. just to, you know, just to make sure things were going okay. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That would have been great. So it it uh, it definitely. I mean, I, I will definitely become a member. I think it sounds like a wonderful oh, organization. Oh, did, did, did you bring it? Did you bring the papers? <laughs> <laughs> Is it all we'll automatic up. debit and all that? You <laughs> sign up and it's automatically we, done. We make it very easy. Yes, yeah, yeah. and we've tried to do that as well. We're not 100 percent there yet, but mm -hmm. yeah, if it's easy, it's easier for yeah. people to, yeah. to take care of that kind of thing. Um, so we'll put up the information at the end so people can know okay. where to find you with the website, but it is um, Greater Newbury Port Village, mm -hmm. right? Dot com. That's right. Dot, dot org. org. Dot org. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's the same with us as ORG. Mm -hmm. So great. Um, thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. Paul. It's thank just so wonderful. Much, and you know, we'll, we'll we will have the programming as long as we have permission mm -hmm. um, for people to see who um, don't come. But I was absolutely floored with how many people came out. <laughs> To on Wednesday in the yeah. snow. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I got we got to the door and uh, almost mm -hmm. everything was canceled except for the village talks. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. that is mm -hmm. awesome, and yeah. it, the room was full, yeah. and it was yeah. a very good program. It was very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So yeah. great. Appreciate great. you offering things like that to the community. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you for coming on in the studio. Well, you're yeah. welcome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for watching in the studio with Greater Newburyport Village.